Hey all, Fjorim here. I started planning my huge nuclear power plant and I thought I'd do a tips and tricks video on my old plant before it's decommissioned. Unlike say coal power, nuclear power is significantly more complicated to set up. You don't simply connect uranium and water to your power plant, you need plenty of advanced materials to prepare the fuel rods. I'm going to show exactly what you need to build a 10 nuclear power plant plant, or should I call it facility or setup? Does anyone else find it strange that the individual buildings are called power plants, so you need to find a new name for the actual power plant building? Well, I'm just gonna call them reactors in this video, as I think most people do. As the first tip, I'm always recommending waiting until you have unlocked particle enrichment from tier 8 before building a nuclear plant, because at least I hate the idea that indestructible waste is piling up somewhere, eventually causing problems. With this milestone, you get the option to turn it into plutonium fuel rods that can be synced. Alternatively, you can burn them for even more power, but then you get truly indestructible plutonium waste. This video will show also how to handle the waste post-processing. During my several saves in this game, I've always built 10 reactors as my first nuclear setup, mainly because managing the waste from 10 reactors lines up perfectly with the post-processing. I don't think building smaller nuclear power plants makes much sense, as you still need the same materials, only in smaller numbers. 10 reactors provides 25 gigawatts of power, which is enough for quite some time. From that you need to deduct the cost of running the plant, which I haven't really calculated, but can't be much more than 2 gigawatts, maybe. If you need more power, you can build everything twice or even three times, but the location I've chosen might not be ideal then. Talking about the location, I think the lake near the central uranium cave is pretty good. The lake provides enough water for at least 10 reactors and might be able to handle twice as much. It can't sustain a massive nuclear setup with hundreds of reactors, though. What I like about this location is that all the resources needed for nuclear power are relatively nearby and can easily be transported there with belts. You can also build your first nuclear setup near the waterfall at the swamp, where there's another uranium node, but this spot is quite far from the nearest quartz nodes. Also, nitrogen gas is a bit far away from that spot. The resources needed depend on if you produce everything at nuclear plant site or not. I've chosen to produce heat sinks elsewhere, which I recommend to everyone. You only need 5 of them per minute, but building a setup for them at your nuclear site complicates things a lot. What I like to do is to produce some spare heat sinks at the aluminium factory and transport those to the nuclear power plant, for example, with drones. Everything else I'm producing at the nuclear site. Here's our full shopping list of basic resources. Oh, and by the way, this guide is not requiring using any alternate recipes. This power plant was built before I did my little Hoverpack world tour and gained access to massive amounts of different recipes, but feel free to swap to any that you have found that might be useful. Something to keep in mind is that I'm not bothering adjusting everything to 100% efficiency with overclocking. This setup produces a bit too much of some items. If you calculate the exact underclocking or overclocking values, you will need fewer items, but the difference is not huge. Another thing that has a bigger impact is that I have actually doubled my waste post-processing. I think it's a good idea to build more post-processing capacity than you need for optimal waste management. The reason for this is that if you mess up something in the build and nuclear waste starts piling up, the only way to get rid of it is to have more post-processing capacity than is needed. I needed to double up my post-processing setup for this particular reason when my whole nuclear power plant halted because I messed up a small detail and the waste started piling up. Believe me, that's not a fun thing to do when you're in a hurry to fix your energy production. So, here's the updated shopping list with doubled post-processing. It might be overkill, but it's not that hard to achieve, so I think it might actually be worth it just to allow for mistakes in the build. So, to begin with, we need 270k Ethereum. There's a node very close to our spot, so that's an easy task. The Ethereum, as well as other original setup, are turned to ingots at the node, because we might as well save some space at the actual nuclear power plant. Next up we have coal. This is a bit further away and we need 315 of it, using the standard recipe for steel ingots. I'm actually using an alternate recipe, which means that I need a bit less coal and iron, but if you only have the standard recipe, that's not a problem. Copper and iron are both found at the same location, relatively close to the coal. Here I'm turning coal and iron to steel, as well as making 20 iron plates per minute. This is enough for the double waste post-processing as well. For that you need 345 iron ore with the standard recipe. In addition, I'm mining 330 copper ore per minute and turning those into copper ingots. We also need quite a lot of concrete for the power plant. 150 with single post-processing and 210 with double post-processing. This means 450 or 630 limestones per minute respectively, 
if you use the standard recipes. The latter might be problematic if you use the same location as I've chosen, since that place only has a normal limestone node, and the maximum you can get from it fully overclocked is 600 per minute. So you might need wet concrete, which I'm using here to provide some spare concrete, or find another source with a pure limestone node. I guess I lied a bit when I said I'm not using any alternate recipes. Nitrogen gas is needed for waste post-processing. Luckily there's a spot with plenty of pure nodes right outside the power plant. Sorry that this place looks like a total mess at the moment, by the way. The ad hoc waste post-processing facility about, as well as the new nitrogen gas package site for my mega factory don't really make it prettier. Next we have the raw quartz, of which we need only 45 or 67.5 per minute, depending on if you do single or double waste post-processing. This is found close to the nuclear plant site. Sulfur is found quite close to where we found limestone, and we need either 150 or 200 per minute of this stuff. And then finally we have the uranium. If you build your plant at the same location as I have done, the uranium you are looking for is deep in the cave. The entrance for the game is here. Be warned, there will be spiders of various sizes in there. In addition, you should be prepared with a hazmat suit and some iodine infused filters, as well as gas mask and gas filters for the big green spider protecting the uranium node. Bring also plenty of materials for a long conveyor belt out of the cave for the uranium. Our 10 reactors need 200 uranium per minute, so a Mark 3 miner on this normal node provides enough as is. If you're using a Mark 2 miner, it needs to be overclocked. Just to give you a tip, don't bring uranium to the actual plant until you have completed it, tested it and are ready to start it. This way you can build it in peace and use power pack without worrying for the radiation. A good rule for nuclear power plant is to go through all the machines at least twice before hooking up the system, because troubleshooting with a hazmat suit is not fun if something goes wrong. Alternatively, you can just save the game before starting the plant and see how it goes. If it goes bananas, just load the save and fix the problem. Oh, and one more resource. Jeez, this is a long list. Water. The reactors need 300 water reads per minute, so they alone require 3000 water per minute. In addition, some water is also needed for other materials, so in total 3150 is needed if doing single post processing and 3200 if doing double. With the materials done, let's take a look at the actual power plant then. I like to build my nuclear facilities so that I have a clean side and a radioactive side. This way I can at least use the power packing part of the power plant also once it's running. My division is not 100% perfect here. I have electromagnetic control rod, nitric acid and sulfuric acid on the radioactive side, even though they are not radioactive. Also, another point I want to make. As mentioned, I built a double post-processing after the fact once I started having troubles. That's in a separate building outside, so the machines used inside the power plant are simply for the single post-processing setup. So let's start from top down then. At one side of the plant I have 10 reactors. Each of them takes 0.2 uranium fuel rod and 300 water per minute. In general, how I built this plant is that all the materials are brought from below to keep the factory floor clean. Here you can see that I'm bringing in water from 5 water extractors in one Mark II pipe and splitting that to two reactors. It is actually not recommended to run Mark II pipes at full 600 per minute, which is something I learned after building this plant. You can see the total mess of pipes I have downstairs as I tried to make each reactor get the full 300 water per minute. I think in the end this mostly runs at 100% efficiency now, but I can't count on that. So now I would distribute the water to Mark 1 pipes of 300 water reach by the water extractors, and then bring one pipe for each reactor. The uranium fuel rods are produced in 5 manufacturers that each produce 0.4 rods per minute. This requires 100 encased uranium cells, 6 encased industrial beams, and 10 electromagnetic control rods per minute. If you look at the encased uranium cell production, we see that those are produced in 4 blenders that each produce 25 cells per minute. A simple stain needs a total of 200 uranium, 60 concrete and 160 sulfuric acid per minute. In addition, they produce a total of 40 sulfuric acid that we need to deal with, as if it's not sent somewhere, it will block the setup and your plant will stop working. There are a few ways to manage this. What I have done is to feed it back to the system. These blenders need 160 sulfuric acid per minute. In addition, the post processing needs 30 sulfuric acid per minute for a single setup. This means that if we produce 150 sulfuric acid and feed additional 40 from the output, the total production is 190, which is exactly what we need. Getting this to work might take some trial and error, 
as pipes are a bit finicky in this game. Also remember that if you are building double post processing, you can't assume the full amount of sulfur as it is accepted there, as those machines might be idle. So it's a good idea to prioritize the output sulfuric acid over that coming from the refineries, for example by bringing in the new acid from below. Right now I would probably try to get rid of the output sulfuric acid in some other way, for example by packaging it and sinking the packaged acid. Anyway, in this plant I have 3 refineries producing a total of 150 sulfuric acid per minute. These require 150 sulfur and 150 water per minute. Next we can go to the clean side and equip our hover pack. Let's look at the encased industrial beam production now. We needed 6 of these per minute and one assembly is producing exactly that. Isn't it great when numbers match? This requires 24 steel beams and 30 concrete per minute. The electromagnetic control rods are produced in 4 assemblers that produce a total of 16 rods per minute. You only need 10 for the nucleus setup and 3 for post-processing. However, if you are doubling the post-processing, you actually need a total of 16 per minute. I have built separate production for these in my external waste post-processing unit, so these are a bit inefficient here and not fully producing stuff. They require a total of 24 stators and 16 AI limiters per minute. Stators are produced in 5 assemblers. These are again producing slightly more than is needed, but I haven't bothered with underclocking. This production requires 75 steel pipes and 200 wires per minute. The AI limiters are also needed for the electromagnetic control rods. They are again produced in slightly inefficient manner at 4 assemblers, producing 20 per minute. These require 100 copper sheets and 400 quick wire per minute. For the encased industrial beams we need some steel beams. There is some someone needed for the waste management that I haven't discussed too much yet. I'm producing these in a total of 3 constructors, which requires 180 steel ingots per minute. Steel pipes are needed for stators, a grand total of 75 per minute. I'm producing 80 in 4 constructors, which takes 120 steel ingots per minute. Stators also need wire, 200 of them. Seven constructors produce 210 per minute from some copper ingot. If you count here, I only have six constructors. That's because I messed up my calculations when planning this and didn't have space for seven, so I just overclocked one of them. Lastly, we have materials for the AI limiters. 100 copper sheets can be produced in 10 constructors, although similarly with wires, I also miscounted here and built only eight, so two of these are overclocked. The AI limiters require also quick wire, 400 of them. These are producing 7 constructors that each produce 60 per minute. This produces a bit too much, so these are not working at 100% efficiency. And that's the whole setup for nuclear power itself. It's quite complicated as it requires plenty of different materials, but it's also a nice challenge to build in my opinion. Next up we'll take a look at the waste post-processing setup. To highlight again this is a single setup, outside I have another building with a duplicated setup that can be used if needed. And time to wear the hazmat suit, we are entering the radioactive area again. This I'm explaining bottom up, because it's easier. We are starting from the 100 uranium waste that we need to get rid of. 75 theft goes to two blenders that produce 100 non fissile uranium. These require 75 uranium waste, 50 silica, 30 nitric acid, and 30 sulfuric acid. As mentioned before, this sulfuric acid comes from the closed loop, where output from encased uranium cell production is sent back to the system. This production also creates another potential problem with an output fluid of water. I really dislike output fluids in this game because they can cause a lot of troubles in various different ways. In this plant I have sent it directly to nitric acid that takes exactly 30 water that these machines produce. This is risky though. A better alternative would probably be to turn these to concrete or ingots with some of the alternate recipes and sink those. The nitric acid that is required for the non fissile uranium is produced in one blender. This requires 120 nitrogen gas, 30 water, and 10 iron plates per minute. Non fissile uranium also needs some silica, which is produced in two assemblers from raw quartz. This produces some spares, so you could also underclock one of them if you want to, as the only 50 is needed. And next we have a particular accelerator for the plutonium pellets. This building is only used for two recipes in the game, so it's always special to actually need it for something. Maybe this is the extra reason I wanted to double out the waste post-processing, just to be able to build another particle accelerator. 
Anyway, this recipe takes the one with non fissile uranium from the previous step and combines those with the remaining 25 nuclear waste. The output is 30 plutonium pellets, and now we have completely eliminated the uranium waste. In my example here, I actually have plenty of uranium waste stored in the input storage of this building, as it's not getting enough non fissile uranium, probably because half of the waste goes to double waste post processing facility. This is not really an issue, it just means that this building radiates a bit more than is necessary. The plutonium pellets are sent to three assemblers that, together with 60 concrete, turn them to 15 encased plutonium cells per minute. Again, this machine is idle as part of the waste management is happening in the other facility. And finally we have the plutonium fuel rod production in two manufacturers. These take the 15 encased plutonium cells from the previous step and turn those to 0.5 plutonium fuel rod per minute. In addition, they require 9 steel beams, 3 electromagnetic control rods, and 5 heat sinks per minute. The produced plutonium frost can be synced, thus eliminating the radioactive waste from the game and also producing a lot of awesome sync points. As mentioned, the heat sinks are not produced here because setting up aluminium is a pain, and in my opinion, not worth it for the 5 heat sinks per minute that we need. I'm instead bringing them with drones from my aluminium factory. And that's the whole nuclear setup. I'm showing fast here my duplicate post processing setup if you want to draw inspiration. This is much more simple layout as it was built in a hurry. I'm also showing full semantics for the production required for this setup. Feel free to post the video here if you want to check them in more detail. This was a long video, I hope you have found it useful, maybe when planning your first nuclear power plant. Good luck with your build. The Mega Factory series will soon contain a video, or actually probably more than just one video, on a huge nuclear power plant that I'm planning that will use all the uranium on the map. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.